Folks, welcome into uh, for folks watching on YouTube. This is not the Mike Goolsby show. Mike Singer forgot to move that over. There it is. This is the Notre Dame football show uh, and pod like a champion here for folks uh, listening uh, via podcast. Appreciate everyone. Uh, it, uh, you know, we got a, a small group with us uh, joining us live and uh, expect to have a great show and tons of folks joining. And um, as Tim always likes to say, chit chat Notre Dame football. Um, so lot to discuss. Um, I, I think that this week, Tim, now this is the week that defines Notre Dame's season, right, Tim? <laughs> is this the week? No, hey, I'm on record. I'm ready for spring ball 2023. That's what I'm ready for. So, uh, yeah, we'll find out what this week is. It's a biggie. It's a biggie. But I think everything's a biggie in your first year as a head football coach. So, let's get to it. All right, folks, uh, please do, whether you're watching live or watching back, hit the thumbs up. Like, I can't explain how much that helps um, our channel. Um, when, when you hit those thumbs up on the video, you have to be, you know, a YouTube member or log in or whatever. I think you can just connect it with a Gmail account if you have one of those. And smash the thumbs up on these videos, whether you're with us live or not. Um, if you are with us live, of course, you can drop a super chat and we'll get to any questions you have right away. And have to mention... Blueandgold.com is your home for all Notre Dame football coverage. So if you like, you know, the recruiting updates and, you know, the Monday and Thursday videos with Tyler Horka and all the different stuff we do, it's like amplified by 10 on our blueandgold.com website. So maybe you're at work uh, and you can't watch a YouTube video, but you can scroll Blue and Gold message board while you're waiting for your coffee. So, um, yeah, please do um, join thousands of other Notre Dame fans on our website. Folks, drop uh, drop a comment. Tell us how you're doing. Um, and, Tim, you can go ahead and tell me how you're doing, man. I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. Ready to roll. Ready to see these uh, Irish travel into Syracuse, New York, which they haven't done since – 2003 a long long time ago and that was a bad day for Notre Dame that day so look at you know really looking forward to this football game uh just to see what this Notre Dame team is going to show up so I'm really looking forward to this uh you know coming week Tim I should shot you a text can you just take a peek at that real quick uh, a side note <laughs> um but uh oh. yeah so we'll we'll dive into our best of the week and uh I will go ahead and start there you go Mr. Hyde oh, is that what um I I'll start and mine is, how about this? Kyron Williams is back. Uh, the Rams tweeted it out. He's back at practice. Do you remember what his injury was before the start of the season, Tim? I, I'll be honest. Uh, I, I don't remember either. But it was, it was, was it ankle? I'm was sorry? It yeah, it was, I mean, it was a leg injury, right? Ankle. I, I want to say so. That sounds yeah. right. But he's back at practice. You see that uh, Kyron Williams swag and confidence. Um, although Mike Goolsby does not allow us to – identify players as uh or, or talk about those kind of traits so i'm not allowed to say that i'm, I'm, I'm just joking oh, yeah. but yeah my uh former uh, notre dame running back um i don't know tim i think when we look back at this guy in 10 20 years you're gonna i don't know he's not a legend or anything like that but he's gonna go down as, as one of the better backs of of you know notre dame's 21st century yes and just doing a bunch of research you know just watch you know comparing last year to this year i'm telling you it is night and day it really is with kyron williams running the ball who had a breakaway threat you know this may be a unpopular opinion i don't think any of these running backs are going to break anything so if they do you know i hope they do but i don't think they're going to break them like kyron and quarterback i know we're going to talk quarterback i'm telling you jack Cohn. <laughs> is jack Cohn would be a heisman trophy guy on this on this year's team he was he, he was why, why do you a thousand that? A th I'm just saying a thousand times better than we all gave him credit for when you watch film last year the offense last year compared to this year Jack Cohn could do some things with the football yeah now so well, just, you know comparing both you know when you know well, when I've been looking at the offenses of so the when Ian Book was Notre Dame's quarterback I, I don't think you were with us yet no. Tim. I don't think we were doing these shows yet yeah I mean Ian Book was the guy everyone trashed um, and you know, it's just, it's a different quarterback every year. And now we look back and like, oh yeah, man. Yeah. You had book. That was the guy. I mean, he was, he did put up fantastic, um, fantastic numbers, Mike and the voice of reason. Oh, I think oh, I appreciate the super chat JP. Um, I'll tell you who the voice of reason was. It was loose emoji. I, I think about that guy 
all of the time. And like just how much I miss him, how much I've learned from him. But then I'll get into, man, what would our operation look like on our YouTube channel? Because we've grown so much in these, you know, these, I mean, what we were started doing YouTube three years ago or so um, as, as Tim's getting an email. Come on, Tim. Come on. It's, come the, on, life. it's the life. What can I do? <laughs> I'm teasing you. But, uh, man, we would have – this we would have this show with uh, with uh, Mr. Samoji, and then I have another video. I I just really miss that guy. So rest yeah. in peace um, to the uh, to the great Lou Samoji. But yeah, I, I will say that Tim Hyde has uh, certainly grown into that that role and um, does a fantastic job. Also throw in Todd Burlich, who uh, we we definitely need to get on our um, Blue and Gold YouTube page um, more as well. He does a fantastic job. Long time a veteran reporter, great staff at Blue and Gold. Um, all right, Mr. Hyde, your best of the week is um, about Ohio State a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I really, you know, the fact, you know, it came out that, you know, Coach Jim Tressel was on campus recently to, to see a couple of his old, all big, you know, Big Ten linebackers there, Marcus Freeman and James Laronitis. I really liked that. And, you know, I liked what, you know, Patrick had to write there at Blue and Gold and break it down and, you know, the – yeah, as Coach Freeman talked about it, man, it was like a perfect time, right? When you lose another game as an 18 point favorite and at home of all places, you lose a trophy game. So it, you know, I really enjoyed it because, you know, it's been talked about, but man, I I really think this trestle influence is bigger than, you know, than is, you know, than has been covered because it sounds like they talk weekly. They talk off often, probably more than once a week. Um, they talked a ton in the off season. I read an article a while back where someone asked, you know, coach Trestle's the president of, of Youngstown state and, you know, is going to be a uh, retiring. I, I, I was reading, so I don't know all the particulars and all that, but, uh, yeah, someone asked, Hey, coach Trestle, what, you know, what advice did you give Marcus Freeman? He was like, Oh, the easiest thing there is take control of everything, you know, your name is on it. And I think that has been not talked about enough because people, hey, everybody wants to blame assistants. Everybody wants to blame the old coach. Everybody wants to do this and that and that when you're four and three. But that quote from Coach Tressel really stuck with me. And it's true. Head coaches, their name's on it. I talked about, I've been headbutting some guys on the message board a little bit, having fun banter going back and forth where people want to blame. But you know what? In 55 years from now, guess what? When they talk about Notre Dame football, they're not going to talk about the assistant football coaches. They're going to be talking about the decisions, the choices, the wins and losses of Marcus Freeman. And I think that needs to be talked about more, not blaming coach Freeman or anything for that, but just this is his program. And for Trestle to say that where he says, Hey, this is yours, run it. And I think some of the decisions have made people want to blame others at the end of the day. I don't think Marcus Freeman is just hanging out, letting other people make decisions for him. I think he's involved in each and every aspect of this football program. I don't like that 55 years from now. That was a very <laughs> sobering number as you hey. think about. You'll be certainly gone unless oh, gee, you thanks. into your hundreds. <laughs> um, and I'll be 84. So, <laughs> All right. The history books. We love to read the history books as Notre Dame fans. And history just never seems to lie to us. So that – there's, there's always books written about each and every single coach. Do you believe in time travel, Tim? Oh, now we're going to do a little sci-fi here. Huh? <laughs> I'm just I like this. I like this. Okay. So, of course, we'll, uh, we had probably our most uh, spirited debate on our we're, – we're, we're turning into a first take or, a, you know, a, just a debate talk show with, with Mike Goolsby and – and I having a discussion about um, this young man who uh, no one ever has differing opinions on. Um, that would be Mr. Drew Pine from New Canaan, Connecticut. You you watch the show. Yeah. I, I'm, I, this whole the, the debate the debate was about the word bad. Is he bad? Which then I you know I've been of course read the YouTube. I read all the YouTube comments. So if you comment, I I will see it. That doesn't mean I read all of them, but we get a lot of spam comments. I think every YouTube channel gets tons of spam comments, so I go through and delete them. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, scroll through, you know, uh, not many people agree with my opinion. You know, I'm just thinking, like, uh, the the word bad. Do you know how many bad quarterbacks there are out there? People are like, he's not a Division One quarterback. 
which if you're saying he's bad and not a Division One quarterback, you're you're proving my point that you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, do you know how low Division One is? Like, do you know what FCS ball is? <laughs> like, come on, like you don't know what you're talking about. Um, but I, I digress. Tim, what, what, what? Okay, see, see, this comment bad for what a Notre Dame quarterback should be. See that I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but that's not what the discussion was. It was the word bad. Yeah, and I, I I'll say, what does that mean? A Notre Dame quarterback should be. Are we talking? Right. So yeah, if, if no, it's, exactly. Standard, if the standard is a first, second round pick, then yeah, he's bad. Book's bad. Yeah, Jack seriously, Holmes bad. I mean, it, it, it's most been a while. The maximum room is bad. No, it, exactly. It's been a while. So that, you know, that's obviously, you know, talking about the history books, Notre Dame quarterbacks, tons of quarterbacks, you know, successful at Notre Dame, the NFL, all those things. So, yeah, it says what, should, you know, should be a quarterback like Drew Pine, should he be at Notre Dame? He's there. So he is there. So when you look at Pine, is he bad? There's some bad quarterbacks. <laughs> Notre Dame has had some bad seasons with quarterbacks in the past. We just have to look at, you know, just some of the really bad seasons with Willingham. I mean, Bob Davies quarterbacks completed 50%. Different offense, option, I, I get it, all that good stuff. So, you know, is he a bad quarterback? He wasn't bad when he's throwing 70-something percent for three straight weeks. Has he been bad the last two weeks? Heck, yeah, he has. I mean, you cannot deny that. When you're If you're a 50% quarterback, in modern college football, you're bad. So the last two weeks, he's been bad. Overall, when you look at, you know, you got to take everything, you know, all together, right? He started five games. You know, he is four and one in those in those five games. So I think we're going to he- know a heck of a lot more how he performs the next two weeks. The <clears throat> what you what you and Goosby talked about, you know, a lot of the the traits, so to speak, about him, the confidence and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, no, that was some good banter there, but it is true. It's like, you know, you know, they say Drew Pine's confident. Okay. Well then play, then play confident. It doesn't seem like he has the last few weeks. He seems like the weight of the world's been on him much, hold on, much more than the first three games. You, I mean, you watch those first three games. He was a lot more loosey goosey, got rid of the ball a little bit more. Mike made a great point last night, the protection. Holy moly. He's not even getting touched and he's, so the games he's not getting touched, he's 50% passing. It makes no sense. And, you know, obviously the drops, we could talk about them, you know, like crazy. That You know, I said after the post-game show, that passed to, that passed to Lorenzo Styles in the chest. Are you kidding me? That That's not a bad quarterback. That's a dude who threw one right where it's supposed to. You can't even throw darts that good, you know, on a Saturday night. And he threw it there and he dropped. So there's been a lot of those. And I just keep going back, it, you know, but it's been a whole season of these quarterback misses from Buckner in the Marshall game, Buckner missing that first play of the third quarter. He has Styles open, he misses. There's been, there's been so many misses this year. It's just, it's becoming maddening to watch where it's either a miss or a drop. And it's this Notre Dame team could be so much better if there was just a little bit more clicking on the outside with the quarterback. You know who would be a really good quarterback is Joe Walt. Do you know he grew up playing quarterback? They actually think they talked about it on the broadcast. I want to say they did. Oh, did yeah, they? they did. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. It's funny. Goolsby really got into that for thirty seconds last night, and I've said this a thousand times. When I'm watching the game. Well, he was just ripping the the NBC guys last oh, night. Yeah. He was just, you know, when I'm watching the game, I'm charting. I got a big old notebook. I'm charting hashes, motions. I'm getting ready for the show and just to talk to guys on the message board during the week. I seriously sometimes do not pay attention to those guys. So if they are bad, so be it. <laughs> Tim, I think most, most of my friends think I'm an asshole. But when it comes yeah. to uh, like Jason Garrett and Jack Collinsworth, they're fine. Drew yeah, Pines, it's okay. Like, I don't know. It's just I, I'm not like, ah, they suck. No, I don't know. It's just. I guess I'm only mean to my friends, you know, and, you know, getting back, to, you know, getting back to pine, you know, he's, he's a junior and are the expectations just like, Oh, you know, you know, people say, Oh, well, Tommy Reese has been there forever. He should be, t- you know, he should be ready to go as soon as he steps on the field. The dude still hasn't played what really meaningful minutes since his 2019 high school football season. Let's be honest with that. He got some reps last year, 
You know, you could say what you want in those games, Wisconsin, the defense kickoff return won those turnover set up a short drive for Kevin Austin. And then uh, in Cincinnati, Drew Pine was what nine for 20, I think throwing in that game. So he wasn't, you know, nails in that game. It's um, it's, a, he's, he's an up and down quarterback. Uh, it's, it's frustrating to watch. I get it. I'm watching the games with everyone else, but sometimes man, I'm a, I'm a firm believer and some dudes need to make plays. And when the ball does hit you and you don't make a play, can't be the quarterback. But at the same time, has Pine been inaccurate at times? Sure. He had Michael Mayer a few times open. I rewatched the first half of Stanford this morning, just prepping some stuff for, you know, talking about the scan. Everyone's going head over heels on the scan. And, um, you know, which, you know, they don't do as much as people think and whatnot. But, uh, you know, Pine just was very, ina- you know, he's st- in that game, he stares down Mayer way too much. So, how do you get him away from that? Or is that just his comfort blanket? You know, is that Linus with his blanket and uh, the peanuts and he's just comfortable throwing to his buddy. It's, it's frustrating and maddening to watch. And I understand. So we're not going to spend all show talking about drew. We're, we're yeah. just a few more minutes and then we're going to move on. Um, but of course, like I said, I think it was our last, I'm sure every single Wednesday night show, we always spend a whole segment talking about Notre Dame quarterbacks because I know what you guys want. If I put up, we're going to do a, a this breakdown of the cornerbacks. You guys don't care about that. <laughs> like generally speaking, I know what you guys wanted us to talk about. So that's yeah, what no one cares about. about the nickel package right now. No, not, not particularly. No. But Ethan says Pine throws a beautiful ball. He has confidence. I'm waiting for the swagger he had in the Cincy game and Wisconsin game last year with the McGregor walk. I need the back. So I was thinking about this. Um, so Pine did that last year. We all loved it. I, I did. Maybe I shouldn't speak for everyone there. Um, and, you know, in the, the off season, a lot of folks, our friend Mr. Gould's being included, talked about his belly button hanging a little bit. And what has he done? He hasn't shown us his belly button. Maybe tr- he even he said that he trimmed down a little bit, you know. I just wonder if, if Pine is listening to this stuff like he – Maybe he, he got a lot of crap for the McGregor walk, and he's he's not doing it anymore. So I just wonder. See, Chief Bro, uh, Chief Brody says I did not love it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if you know he he's either been told not to do that or it's just not you know like that's just not, like he still is that confident kid. But he's not doing that anymore. And I also want to mention real quick. Um, I Tim, I know you saw or, or heard Marcus Schumann's quote. When he's talking about Steve Angeli and Angeli, a true freshman who has never thrown a pass in a game, told his head coach jokingly, but still said, you know, hey, next time you put me in there, throw the ball. Like, come on, coach. I've been in there and we scored three plays, you know, whatever it is. I I, I think that uh, I think Steve's got that confidence. I like that. But go ahead. Tim. No, uh, you know, so I guess you want to see the old Chris Zorich. If Chris is listening the Chris Zorich. <laughs> 1990 half shirt, you know, rocking, you know, like Chris wore. But, you know, when you win the Lombardi award, you could wear that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's his belly button. His, uh, his, uh, was his hair like in a, who's it? Not Hercules or someone. I forget who it is real quick. But, uh, who knows? Who knows? I don't want to see his belly button. I'm all right. I want to see some completions. That's what I want to see. But, uh, yeah, Pine gets the brunt of it because he's Notre Dame quarterback. But I think this football team has 15 issues that all roll in together. I don't think it's one thing this season it has been it's it's been a team that's all over the place defense is great and then they give up a 90 yard drive literally it feels like every single game can't create a turnover notre dame has now turned into fumble you know fumble time with estime it's just been a hodgepodge of a, a not not a really good team flow over 60 minutes in every game yeah i've talked about this tim before people criticize quarterbacks and offense corner so much because when things don't work, it's very glaring. Think about this. So he threw 14 incompletions, right? Of course there are a couple drops. You had a pick in there. Imagine there being a receiver who drops like 13 passes or, or a, a linebacker who misses 13 tackles that starts to become a lot more obvious and glaring yes. because you know, it's happening so often, but we don't talk about estimates fumbles because it's, you know, no, you haven't heard problem. anything. But in the, in the media, the message board, no one's talking about oh, estimates fumble problem. No one's talking about that at all. It's oh, we'll bounce back. But it's like yeah. it's it's a quarterback thing. So it's it, you've had drops. You've it's so not trying to again. I'm I'm not saying Pine's the answer for next year. I'm not saying he's better than Buckner. I'm not saying any of these things. It's just like 
need to just chill out about this young man. But anyways, continuing on. But a real quick, you know, but a real quick 30 seconds on that, Mike, just, uh, you know, going back to Coach Tressel's quote about, you know, take control of everything, you know, you know, gosh, I mean, can we find someone to interview and really get the, the scoop of what went on in December, early January on why they did, why these Freeman, Freeman's that football coach. People want to blame Reese all you want. Freeman was on campus last year. Freeman saw Drew Pine and Tyler Buckner throw every single day for a year. So it's December, the Fiesta Bowl's over, and Freeman sits back. Freeman's played with a Heisman Trophy winner. Let's do not forget that, okay, with Troy Smith at Ohio State. So Freeman sits back in his chair in his office, and he says, you know what, we're pretty good here. I'm the head football coach. I'm going to ride with these guys. I would love to know the true story, why they did not get a quarterback knowing the two, because they weren't going to play in jelly and polish. Let's get real. So that is that is going to end up being the story of 2022 when it's all said and done. I truly believe. We've we've opined on this. Yeah, no pun intended. It's just going to yeah exactly. It's just, but it's just it's just more interesting because we've never really heard a story other than Pine Pine or not Pine. Excuse me. Marcus Freeman talked about the wide receivers at the end of spring. He says we like our guys. We don't need any more. We're fine. Freeman was. Asked about if do you remember this a few weeks yes. ago? Freeman was asked by Pete Sampson of the Athletic, yes, about taking a transfer next season, and and I want to say it was, and then Freeman answered why they didn't take one this past season, yes, and it was just he didn't really give much reason. He just basically said we they looked at it quarterback room. I mean, it's a a, a a fairly routine coach speak answer, but yeah. Um, all right, let, let's address. We got three super chats, and then nice. I. I think we're good on uh, talking quarterbacks unless anyone else is, wants to address it in our live chat here. Milton fan says, I don't think we can criticize Drew Pine without discussing Tommy Reese. He recruited him, developed him. But our, my, my question to you is like, I love this. What, what else, what, what did you expect of, of Drew Pine, the starting quarterback in Notre Dame, ex, except for exactly like, I, I think if you really think about what you would have thought, before the season or before these games, it's just about it. Can you know he, he can be pretty good? You know, they think about some of those games where he lit up some defenses, and then can be pretty bad. I, I think this is you. You he needs a lot of support. I I think this is pretty much Drew Pine. So the development part, I I think Drew Pine hit a ceiling there. I don't know how much better Drew Pine's going to get. It's really just going to be experience at that point. But as far as Tommy Reese in, in the recruiting at the position, that is a, a whole different discussion. But um, yeah, my quick 30 second take on this is I always hear this Tommy Reese recruiting. Well, I like to look at it as a dude, once again, head football coach guy, you know, who's the head football coach, you know, Brian Kelly. I'm not, you know, you, I mean, you can say whatever you want, you know, but at the end of the day, Tommy Reese is what, 30 years old right now. So people truly, and, th and this was what fascinates me. And I've been talking to so many people about it on blueandgold.com there is, do you really think Brian Kelly with his, all his experience, all his knowledge, all the games that he has coached one and has, and has won over the years is truly going to put his legacy on the line for 26 year old Tommy Reese? 27 year old Tommy Reese to handle 100% of the quarterback recruiting. Do you really think Brian Kelly just sat back and says, yeah, let's just, just recruit that one guy only. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, you know, we weren't around, you know, when those things were happening and whatnot, but, but that is, you know, you could, it's not like Tommy Reese is all by himself. Does, does Tommy Reese really have carte blanche? Boom. You go get whoever you want. Brian Kelly is just sitting back golfing. Oh, oh, who are we signing this December? Oh, Drew Pine. Oh, cool. Let me see some film on him. Come on. It's like, maybe that doesn't happen at the University of Notre Dame. Maybe a little bit. What's that? So maybe a little bit. No, it, it, true. I've told a, a story bit. about a little bit as we know, but, but it's yeah. like Tommy Reese just turned 30 years old. People he's not, he's not the one saving grace. The one guy that did everything. It's like, I just don't buy that. I think it's, I think at that level, the recruiting coordinator is also involved, which was Pauly and Elston obviously did a ton of that stuff as well, just like Chad Bowen's doing that now for Marcus Freeman. There's so many other variables that go into it than just one guy. And at the end of the day, 
if you're trying to recruit what in 2020 CJ Stroud, I was looking at the 2020 quarterbacks outside of DJ CJ Stroud, Bryce Young. Look at the top 20. The other 17 are horrible. So you know, quarterback recruiting is a crapshoot. So was if CJ Stroud was interested, is Brian Kelly? Did Brian Kelly call him? What are the odds of he would even do that? As you know, Mike, slim to none, unless he was coming on campus or whatnot. So. You know, I could go around and around in this. I just don't think it's 100% on one 27-year-old assistant football coach who's been in the game for a couple of years. All right. I got a quick story to tell. But first, sure. um, let's hear um, from Augie's Locker Room, my favorite sponsor personally, nice. along with Rogue Shop and tied with all of them. I'm just joking. Uh, looking for that perfect gift for that Notre Dame fan for uh, – uh, you're the Notre Dame fan or, or a Notre Dame fan in your family or a friend, one place to go. And of course that is Augie's locker room, which is located less than a mile away from Notre Dame stadium and was named the best Notre Dame's collectibles in the country. If you're a passionate Irish fan, you're looking for that special Notre Dame piece to complete your rec room. Go to augieslockerroom.com. They have a wide selection of Notre Dame stadium uh, pieces. They have jerseys, helmets and for youtube folks you see it all on the screen here autographs one of kind rock me items exclusive joe montana signed items and augie is partnering with famous sculptor jerry mckenna to be the exclusive dealer of his notre dame bronze statues which are the statues that you've seen around the stadium augie has jerry mckenna's artwork for sale in his store and if he doesn't have it in his store augie will find it for you Visit augieslockerroom.com or stop in at 1811 South Bend Avenue and see the vintage helmet display dating back to 1890. augieslockerroom.com, 574-277-NDND. All right, so I've told this story before on the air that um, – uh, sorry, I'm reading the YouTube comments. There was a player committed to Notre Dame. It was a few years back. And um, walk by Brian Kelly in the locker room before a game. Brian Kelly just kind of gave one of these, you know, just, just yeah. a little nod to someone you like, I think I know who you are, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> I was like, dude, when I heard that story. I was like, it's a miracle that player signed with the Irish. Um, well, well, yeah. well, let's take that, Mike, and go to quarterbacks. All right. You've been to a lot of camps in your days. You've seen a lot of quarterbacks that are in the NFL nowadays. Is is Trevor Lawrence going to go to Notre Dame if the head football coach is not involved? No. So how much, you know, you know, what is Tommy Reese going to do? And I'm just using him as an example. Let's how about my, you know, Mike, Mike Sanford was there for a year. Who's now the interim coach at Colorado. His, his big recruit was obviously Ian book. He had to pull him because they lost out on, uh, you know, some other guys that year. It's your head football coach. Why does Dabo get guys? Cause he grinds. Tim. Saban, Urban Meyer, all Tim. these guys. So it's like Tim. we got to get real sometimes, people. I love you. We got to move on. Go for it. We got two more super chats. We can't. It's like we're not going to spend all show talking about Pine, but here we are. Is the issue a Tommy Reese scheme or the fact that Pine can't stretch the field? Imagine um, Hartman. I think is Wake, right? Wake's quarterback. He says WVU. Uh, Sam yeah, Hartman. Yeah, I think yeah, Wake. Uh, I bet opinions would change. Just saying. Thanks, guys. What do you think, sure. Tim? He's a heck of a quarterback. The guy could sling it. I'll take him in Notre Dame in a heartbeat. So, but he's not here. It's pine. It is what it is. Is that can they not, you know, can they stretch the field? They've tried. They threw seven balls over 25 plus yards against Marshall and didn't complete any. You know, they did, they went 50, and Buckner threw a 50 some odd yard rope against the Buckeyes and it complete. So they've had Lindsey wide open multiple times the last two weeks and haven't hit him. They have been able to stretch the field at times. You know, is it vertical passing like the Tennessee Volunteers? No, but they have stretched it at times. They haven't completed these darn balls. Appreciate the Super Chats, folks. And, and then one from Mike Nolan. I like Drew as our guy, but accuracy issues need to get him out of the pocket. But throws poorly on the run, especially to the left, and seems to be playing. Sir. I mean, I don't, most quarterbacks at the college level um, – aren't great throwing across their body. And I know mm -hmm. Goolsby said yesterday, throw that out. Um, any else, any other thoughts here? No, I mean, I would like to see some more pocket stuff because especially the last couple, you know, his interceptions trying to throw directly over the right guard, the last couple of weeks that have been tipped. Um, yeah. I would love to see, you know, a couple more just straight, 
rollouts. Tommy Reese rolled out a ton when he was quarterback under Brian Kelly on third longs. I would like to see some because the interceptions, the bat downs, we've been seeing a lot, a lot of those uh, recently. What was the end of that super chat? I'm sorry, Mike. There was a sentence. I'm sorry. Uh, let me pull it up. Um, oh, run to the left. Yeah, you run to the left because <laughs> Joe Alt's going to be a top ten. No, pick. no, R- oh, throws okay. poorly on his throws poorly when he's rolling gotcha. to his left. Gotcha. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I misread it right. I was like, I was going to give your boy Joe Alt some hype. Oh, I mean, PFS he deserves it. Course. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah, let's talk about all the good. You know, the Joe Alt, like Blake Fisher. Right. Blake he's Fisher's he's gotten better ball. each and every week. Zeke Corral is he doing? Hey, he's balling. How about Zeke at center? When was the last time someone brought up Zeke Krell? You know, it's, it's been a while. Uh, Riley Mills is going to be an All-American, I feel, next year as a senior. I think he's been playing some really good football. So there's, there's been some good football this year. But, man, it's just a roller coaster, buddy. Yeah. All right. If uh, Robert H., you know who you are, you tweeted me, and we're going to get to your topic next week because I sent it to Tim for this, this week's show, and Tim forgot to do his research on it. No, so I, I, I got some good week. research, and I really want to get into that. So we will spend time talking about that next week because I do have some good stuff to, to break that down for you guys. Robert, shoot me a tweet next Tuesday yes. and remind me, and uh, we will get to it um, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I was we were supposed to talk about it last week, and then I forgot, and then this week Tim forgot. So, all right, we got you next week. Okay. Um at Syracuse, noon Eastern. How do you feel about a noon kick, Tim? Uh, good for me and you. Uh, I, I like that better than talking at 12.05 a.m. So I, I'm, en- I'm going to enjoy that. So, t- yeah, Tim and I will be live. We'll do a po- – we'll do a – I don't call it a post-game show because usually we, we go as soon as we can after the game. We're not going to go quite that soon after. Um, I think we said, what, f- about five – yeah, yeah, give or take an hour plus or so afterwards. Tim's, once, yeah. Tim's coaching. Um, and uh yeah, so we're we're gonna do it a little bit. But yeah, we will be live, and then of course schools be Sunday. So my question to you, Tim, is would you accept Notre Dame going one and one these next two weeks? Goolsby Goolsby yeah. said they're gonna lose against Syracuse and beat Clemson, which that would be the most Notre Dame 2022 thing to happen. What, what say you, Mr. Hyde? If that was to happen, I think everyone would uh, be high fiving. Yes, I, uh, I I would take Mike Goolsby's recommendation every single day from now until Clemson. So, is it going to happen? My humble opinion is no. But uh, will I take one and one, whatever the one and one is? Yes, uh, I think that would be a, a nice accomplishment because you have two ranked football teams coming up back to back. If they win in at you know at the dome, I know it's not the Carrier Dome. I'm calling it the Carrier Dome and forever, but. Uh, if they win in the Carrier Dome, that's a huge win because that's a really good football team. That's a highly motivated football team. But, I mean, you listen to Dino Baber's press conference. That guy's ready to play today. So his players are going to be nuts. That I'm telling you, this, the, that Syracuse game, for some reason, the way he talked about it this week, that is their Super Bowl. And I think they've been prepping for that, and, and they're going to be beyond hype. Clemson game is what it is. Is Clemson – they have a bye, so they're going to get ready. You know, they struggled against Q's. Everybody go back the last five, six years and look at Syracuse Clemson games. Every single game has been close with those guys. So that was no shocker what, what happened last week. Clemson's Clemson. Their, uh, their front four is legit. You could beat them in the secondary, but does Notre Dame have a quarterback and a group of receivers to beat them? That's going to be the question of that game is – is, is can you attack uh, the Clemson DBs? Because a lot of people have, but can Notre Dame? That's going to be the storyline of that ball game. All right, Tim, I'm going to go completely off topic here. Sure. Um, if I'm a defensive coordinator, and thank God for that school that I'm not, the game plan to stop Notre Dame, load the box, take Michael Mayer out of the game, make everyone else beat you, right? Yes. That's got to be the thought for these teams, right? How is Michael Mayer still catching – all these passes it all for all these yards and touchdowns. How is it because the, the defenses just don't stay stick to that? Or is it mayor just beats the double team? Like mayor beats the double a lot. There's a lot of times um, there's a dude up high, a, a guy down low. It's not every play. There's some plays like the, the Michael mayor touchdown, by the way, that, you know, he tied, you know, Ken McAfee's, you know, tight end record. 
which by the way was a scan play for all those people that hate the scan. It was that's, a scan. That's where we're going next, Tim. Yeah, it was a scan call just for everyone. So they actually did a check with me, changed the play, and guess what? Michael Mayer scored. So that was a great design because it took the double team away because they ran, uh, they basically ran smash into the boundary, and this and the safety had to respect Thomas, who's the uh, running the corner there, and it's the slot. So there's been some designs to try and get him open, but man, he has doubled a ton. A ton, but he's a stud. You're gonna high low him, and he Stanford did a really good job on it. But Mayor knows leverage. He knows how to, you know, like basketball. He knows how to use his butt, and like he's getting a rebound and rub off of guys and create some good leverage uh, for that. And some of the misses Pine miss the last two weeks in particular, Mayor has been open where he's rubbing off of guys, and Pine just has not uh, hitting them a couple times. But he's a stud, man. He's a stud. By the way, another real quick, Mike, the scan. I love the scan, right? I love it because it just drives people nuts. The freakish <laughs> catch he made one-handed. Oh, guess what, Mike? God. Guess what, freak. Mike? Yeah. It was scan. a scan call. It was a scan call. All right. Well, we're going, we're going there next. <laughs> um, when I played high school ball a decade ago, um, actually 11 years ago, nice. um, to be exact. I mean, think 2011. That was like Oregon's spread offense. That's like when that started. Right. That's when that yes. really got going. Um, so I can remember we called it our sugar huddle. We would rush to the line mm-hmm. um, or after play ends, our offensive coordinator would give us a formation. We would line up in the formation. Quarterback would you know, go, hut, hut, you know, wh- you know, whatever um, his cadence was. And then we'd all uh, to see if they would jump. If they don't, we look to the sideline and get our play. I loved that. Because defenses didn't know how to adjust. You know, they would just sit. And if they're playing, you know, cover three and we're on the right or, or, or the left hash and they're playing cover three, we would run. A, I, would, I was the outside receiver on the trips. Uh, and we would just run. Uh, our quarterback would roll to the right. I ran a six-yard hitch, take it up four yards. First down every single time. Personally, uh, it's, it's, it's my favorite thing. I think for fans in watching this offense, it's like you lose that tempo, um, which I get. I just think that Notre Dame, they should not be doing this the, the scan thing in, in two-minute situations. I think that's the most obvious thing. But uh, sure. you got to be able to do a lot of different things. I think Notre Dame should be able to sprinkle in some tempo, sprinkle in some scan, just keep the defense off balanced. Um, so your thoughts on it, Tim, uh, just give me your brief thoughts on it and then go into your research from, you know, you charted each Notre Dame play and what happened after they, you know, looked over to the sideline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, tempo, I mean, you know, I do chart things. Notre Dame doesn't do a lot of tempo. They did really good tempo last year with Jack Cohn. So they haven't done a lot of it. Me, my opinion on the reason why they're not doing it, because they have young quarterbacks. And I think they're trying to control these quarterbacks and give them plays that are going to work for them to yeah. have success. That's what I think. So instead of just calling a huddle, you know, run out there, run the play. And they got, you know, and you're running power. O, and there's two strong safety sitting outside the box. You're running into it. No, they're checking out of that stuff. It is some of the old school check with me system is what it is. They do have a call. They're calling it. They get up to the huddle. They see what it is and they are checking, but they are not checking every single play. So, you know, people, if you're on the blue and gold, most matches board, go on there and chit chat and whatnot. I just threw up, you know, some of the plays from the, the, I just did the first half. Second half was completely different. They're just killing clock, trying to get the living heck out of there. But the first half, there was back, there was a couple of times back to back drives. They didn't do one scan. So it's not like they're doing it all the time. The first half last week, they only ran scan 10 times technically nine, I count 10 on this, on the styles drop. I think that was going to be the same uh, play that they had. They ended up having to burn a timeout and they stuck to it. So that's why I counted 10. They only did scan 10 times. And out of those times, you have multiple touchdowns, multiple big first downs out of it. So they don't do it every single time. This notion out there in the neat, you know, in the media verse or on Twitter and the message boards, like, Oh, I hate the scan. They're not doing it every single time. It's only on occasion. There's, I mean, Pine will look over and check and they just give them a thumbs up, just go and run it. That is happening more times than when they do check. 
And I think there just needs to be an honest discussion. If people are going to say, oh, I hate the scan. Okay, well, okay. Do you hate the touchdown to Michael Mayer? The 37 yard uh, post play to Jaden Thomas was a scan. Do you hate that? They checked out of a play and they hit Thomas for a nearly 40 yard post run because they saw the safety talking about mayor safety was coming down the bracket mayor thomas goes right over the top 40 yard gain so it does work so and um and reese is putting them in some really good positions by doing it over the last couple of weeks is this has become more i'm going back now re-watching games and just highlighting some of the the calls and the checks that uh coach reese has done mr hyde we have uh Exhausted our topics. I love it. Um, we will uh, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes, see if there's any other super chats. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just to go through quickly our week of coverage here on our Blue and Gold YouTube page. Thursday at noon, Marcus Freeman meets with the media. It's a shortened session, so it's about 15 minutes. Uh, and then I will post the video from that on our Blue and Gold YouTube page as soon as – I can, as well as uh, posting the video with uh, Tyler Horka's reaction and um, to what he had to say. And we'll, we'll discuss that. It's usually a good eight to 10 minute video. Friday, final thoughts, observations, and prediction. It's what me and Hyde will be recording after we are done with uh, this show. Uh, and then Saturday, of course, we'll be going live around 5 p.m. So a little bit after the game is concluded, but Tim and I will discuss it. And then Sunday should be 7 p.m. Eastern time, Mike Goolsby show. So that's the lineup of what's coming up these next few days. Um, Tim, I'll just give you a, a minute. Give me your updated season prediction. Notre Dame's four and three. Where do you see them finishing? Uh, oh, I'm going to be brutally honest here with everybody. I truly believe they're going to go six and six. Um, I Ooh. don't think I, I do. I'm, I'm going, uh, I'm going six and six. I think they're going to struggle this week. I don't think they're going to have the athletes to play with Clemson. In a big night game, the uh, Navy, BC, they'll beat. How about this? The Boston College game is going to be for a bowl game. The Phil Bowl, Phil Jerkovic is going to be back. <laughs> so that that's going to be to get their sixth win is to beat their old quarterback, Phil, at home. So hopefully it's not 1993, and I hate to bring it up, Goolsby, but hope it's not 2002 when they lost to BC in those classic games. Not classic when you lose them, but um, – yeah. And I, and I just don't think – I think SC is going to be 10-1 and one when, when Notre Dame comes to town, and I don't think Lincoln Riley is going to lose to Notre Dame with a, you know, playoff berth possibly on the line, a huge bowl game. I, I think 6-6, six and six for as I'm reading discussions, I agree with 99% of a lot of what's being said and whatnot, and I get it. But I think they're going to go 6-6 six and six because of the quarterback position and and just the playmaking ability of wide receivers. It's, it's just – it's true. And, you know, we could say what we want about Drew Pine. He is the quarterback. Nothing's going to change, as Brian Kelly always said, right? No one's walking through that door. So um, he is the quarterback this year, and I just think they're going to go 6-6. Six and six. I think this is a up-and-down football team, and up-and-down football teams go 500. I'm going 7-5. I think they're going to beat Syracuse because I think this Notre Dame team is just uh, – I mean, they're slight favorites. I, I've got them – actually, you'll have to wait and see on Friday. Yeah. Um, but I, I do I, – I got Notre Dame winning that one. I think they'll lose against Clemson and Sa Southern Cal, but I got them 7-5. This Clemson game, man, is going to be a fun – it's going to be a fun one. But the Qs, they got some dudes, man. Um, one more super chat and we're getting out of here. Theodore says, Mike, what about the report that Tommy wasn't open to offensive analysts like Cutcliffe being added to staff? If David Cutcliffe wanted to come be an analyst on Notre Dame staff, um, that in, in Notre Dame said no, shame on Notre Dame. <laughs> like, Let me say this real quick on David Cutcliffe. All right, everyone, you know the old timers. They know he was going to be the OC under Charlie Weiss. You know before he got you know his health issues and had to have surgery and you know got out coach and obviously came back into it. David David Cutcliffe was a personal quarterback coach for what, Peyton Manning, correct? So. Peyton Manning's nephew is going to the University of Texas with Steve Sarkeesian, who's already had some Heisman Trophy winners under his belt as a coach. If David Cutcliffe wanted to coach again, he's going to the University of Texas where Arch Manning was going to be. That's where he was going to go. He was not going to Notre Dame to coach Buckner Pine and no recruits in 2023. He's a quarterback guy. If David Cutcliffe was going to coach, he was going to go to the University of Texas. Steve Sarkeesian 
talked to him tons and tons. It's been reported. And you know what he's doing now? He's a special assistant to the SEC commissioner. The guy's enjoying life. He's 70, 72 years old. You don't want to coach no more. So I think this being out there is like, you know, it's not happening. He was, I think he'd rather be around the Mannings, correct, than the Notre Dame quarterback room. That's just my opinion. All right. And with, uh, and with ND Nation's overwhelming positivity, he is saying that Notre Dame beats Syracuse. So oh. uh, uh, appreciate it. Um, Look at this Bernie. Oh, I didn't mean to pop this on the screen. I love but, it. Um, um, there you go. Five and oh. I will eat pie. I will make me a piece of humble pie and we will serve it up. If that happens, man, I'll eat the heck out of some pie. All right. If Notre Dame goes five and oh, how about this? If Notre Dame goes four and one to end the season, I'll take it. After the Southern Cow game, we will eat pie. Eight and four? If Notre Dame goes eight and four, yes, we are going to enjoy pie during our live show. Remember that one live show where I said the, 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 the floor was seven and five and Mike Singer gone? I got more crap for that oh, prediction yeah. than I did saying that Drew Pine's okay. Oh, I got so doubt, much right. crap for that. And without a doubt, you got you got ridiculed and whatnot. And now yeah. that that's 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 the ceiling, <laughs> probably exactly. seven and five, maybe that, eight and four. But eight and, eight and eight and four would be amazing with this upcoming schedule. If Notre Dame goes eight and four, it's tough. Give Freeman the raise, right? But I always say don't do it because they gave Weiss the raise too early. So can you just imagine if no if Estime doesn't fumble or Notre Dame just ekes out that Stanford win and they don't have their head up their arses against um uh, Marshall? Just the Marshall one, I you know, if you're gonna lose a game, it's gonna be Marshall. Let me just say that because of the hangover, nine months prepare for Ohio State, the Buckner pick, the defense letting him go 90. I get that. It's the Stanford one, we can say whatever we want about Stanford. It's like, Mike, they had three touchdowns after the blocked punt. They never scored. You know, the over, three of the overhead to Lindsay, the mayor, and there was another one. I forget what it was. I mean, are you kidding me? They just, the Brendan, the, the Lindsay, poor Lindsay. The guy's an All-American this year if a quarterback could hit him. I mean, he would have seven touchdowns this year of 50 yards or more. Poor guy. I mean, someone's got to give that guy a pat on the back and say, hey, keep grinding, buddy, because they have just d- devoured his stats. Yeah. What a year. All right. Well, uh, appreciate everyone watching. Please do um, smash that thumbs up before uh, you get out of here. And, and uh, if you're watching back or live, whatever, please hit that thumbs up. Podcast audience, as always, we would encourage you to join um, our, our shows via YouTube. I had a, a comment yesterday. Someone said, I used to listen via podcast and I watch on YouTube for the first time. And I yes. loved it so much more because there's a lot of things like when I'm talking and Goolsby's just shaking his head or vice versa. Sometimes there's just a lot more of, of you know, the, the nonverbal cues and, and you get to see Tim Hyde's, you know, just beautiful hair. Um, so <laughs> I'm still waiting to see the guy mowing the lawn in Goolsby. Has, has the guy ever mowed that lawn during a show? I'm still waiting for that. You, you know? got you got Goolsby in the tiny home and uh, Tim Hyde in the boat. And By the way, that, that quote that quote is my Goolsby all time when he said the tiny the tiny home was just epic. When he said that, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> all right, folks, you take it easy. Have a good one, and we'll catch you next time.